Um, let's go to Clark West Cooper. Okay, let's see. Um, share the tab instead. Um, share this tab. Yeah, we're gonna be listening to some X Society Truth Towers and big guys here. Um, oops, not that one. What's up? What's going on? All right, yeah. So that propylene glycol, I heard that was bad, but glycol I also heard that bubble. that's what's in uh, people's inhalers. I'm trying to. I know that like uh, we used to put it. Like when you have asthma, I heard that's what's in those inhalers. That's what's got me like. So how can it be that bad? If they use it in inhalers and it's in vape and they say vaping safer than cigarettes, well, I, that's confusing to me. Yeah, I'm, and I know what it's made out of, so I know it ain't good, but I I don't know. Yeah, it's you like like you said. I, I don't. I'm, I'm at the point now. I I don't trust none of this shit. If it didn't, if it didn't come from, if it didn't come out the ground. Or if, so if, yeah, if it didn't get killed, if it didn't get killed, I don't trust it. If it didn't get killed in my face, I don't trust yep. it. Like even even yeah, the meat it's... grocery store, you can't even trust the meat. Because they put, I... they put, yeah, they're putting some type of gas inside of our meat in order to like keep it, make it look red, make it look pretty to sell. Man. Yeah, I heard like that. salmon don't look that red. Like... Salmon doesn't look as red as uh, when I'm you buy it in the some, store. Uh, it's always red. It's not red like that all the time. I'm going to send out some invites real quick, though, Clark. Yeah, okay. I just did myself. Hey, Lavender, I'll give you a mic. You can speak whatever you want. Good to see you, Lavender. Thank you for coming in, Joanna. We're going to be talking about... Um, you know, poisoned food, poisoned earth. Um, there's been enough chemicals dumped into the ground and enough chemicals dumped, you know, pretty much everywhere to cover the entire globe. I mean, this stuff's in the ocean. Our pills that we throw away end up in the ocean and end up in the rivers. And uh, it's a mess. It's a disaster. Uh, so, Drip, what do you want to say about this? My bad. I was sending out some uh, invites. What's going on, uh, AI? It's good to see you again. Bro. Yeah, AI, AI, AI. It's good to see you, brother. Uh, we were talking about poison food, poison dirt. It's Go a ahead, whole Drip. Scene, bro. It's a whole scene. It's awful. Yeah, it, it is, awful. definitely. And we put a, I put a link at the top uh, that shows a list of 50 chemicals to avoid and pretty much all of it's in everything. Yeah, I try, I try to keep it clean. I'm a carnivore. 
for the most part, and then I have my smoothie once a day with organic ingredients. But anything packaged gotcha. is going to mess you up. Anything packaged yep. is going to jack you up. Very true. Drip, go ahead. I, I wanted you to share what you uh, wanted to say about this. Uh, no, it's just it's just pretty sad, I, I would say, that, you know, because I, I, I take, like, you know, with, with my older family, like, I have boomer parents, and, you know, they're so used to this this lifestyle that they don't really fully comprehend what's going on and you know uh, I feel like just some of the medical stuff like it's, it's different with my dad my dad he does understand this and he's he's different but like with my mom and stuff like I feel like you know it's these it's the foods and these medicines and all of these things that play into like she's going through the early stages of dementia and stuff right now and it's I, I, you know it's I think it has a lot to do with like the diets and all of these chemicals these poisons that they're putting in our foods and, and even like you said like with the with uh, them dropping this this stuff into our into the ground and the, the, the fertilizers that, that they're using with these big uh, mega farms that they have out there uh, they're basically ruining our, our ground. So like whenever we do grow things or the, at these farms, like it, it doesn't even matter if they, they add it, you know, into like the, this packaged food, the packaged foods or not, like it's still in our foods from the gardens just because the grounds have been poisoned. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. You what's know. up, Ramon? Oh, what's going on, Ramon? Been a while. But yeah, it's sad, you know, like they're, they're doing this, like even when we go into our water, like, uh, you know, I found out with the, like once you boil chlorine, it, it, there's a chemical reaction that happens. And like we have a poison going into our pores just from taking a shower. So it, it's just wild. Well, yeah, because there's chlorine in our water and then we take a hot shower and now you're affecting that chlorine on a chemical level. So if you're actually, and I take a lot of hot showers, I like cold showers too, but I take majority hot showers and now I see I shouldn't be doing that. I should at least put it to warm to where it's not hot. Yeah, that, that's crazy. That's wild. Wow. I never even thought about that. Wow. Yeah, because it gets aerosolized. The heat yep. and then the spray, and so you're breathing it. There's a guy on X called Brian Ramel. I don't know if you've heard of him, but the guy is like – so he was talking AI 10 years ago, and he did a post on that. He's like it aerosolizes the chlorine and the fluoride, and you're basically – said the most toxic – moment of your day is when you're breathing in the shower which is kind of a grim thought actually yeah that I, I mean i almost feel like that should be a news headline letting everyone know see if we were doing real news that's something they would do if they cared about us this is something a news source would do they would make front page news Keep your shower at a lower temperature. Don't take hot showers and explain why. Explain it so everybody understands so we don't have to do shows like this. Well, I like doing shows like this. But so we don't have to explain it to people and then they have to catch it in the goddamn replay. And if they don't catch it, they're going to live their life not knowing. So I, come on. I mean, tell the fucking news. Tell us what's happening. Go ahead, Ale. Hey, what's up, Clark? <clears throat> hey, bro. What's up, brother? Great show, man. Hey, as much as I would love to take that co-host, I'm not going to be able to serve you well because I'm working on some stuff that we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, um, oh, you, you but, talking about our song? Working on that and a couple other ones. But check okay, it out. Okay, great. Uh, check it out, though. Uh, I want to say this, and I want you to educate me on the hot water thing because uh, I'm a avid hot shower person. Um, but I, I will say this. Having uh, worked in the uh, the uh, food industry 
under as a kill floor butcher uh, for about a year back in 2003 to 2004. Um, man, I learned so much. But I'll say this: a lot of the stuff I think uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Teardrop said it or Drip said it. I think Drip said it earlier. I, I would agree if you're not growing your food. You know, you should always use caution anyway. Um, you know, there is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, and then you got to watch those guys too, the farmer markets, because I'm finding out they're starting to buy thrown out old produce from the grocery stores and shit. So you got to watch these people nowadays for real. Um, but I will say this, just to add a little bit in, since you got the food stuff in there, I don't know if you was there when we did the show on blood type diets, but... Hey, man, there's much to be said about people's health and the type of actual blood type you have and what you're actually eating. They they actually have known and been knowing that if you have certain blood, like, for example, you have an old blood type, you shouldn't eat cattle beef. You should be eating, like, veal, buffalo, bison. That's your meat. It's very lean, no fat in it whatsoever, uh, unlike cattle beef, as you know. Um, if you're B and A, they tell you a lot of green, I mean, old type people can't eat a lot of greens and you know, a lot of black people, if y'all don't know this or not, are, are O type and they're the number one, uh, consumers of shit like, you know, green beans, collard greens and stuff like that. And it could be attributing to much of their, their problems in health that they're being, you know, not being told. Um, so I would I would definitely say what you're this conversation you're having is definitely a damn good one. And I would say if people truly are interested in their health like that, I'd start finding out what your blood type is and go find out exactly what your blood type is supposed to have in in, in its diet. Because you you'll be amazed. A lot of people with a a type blood not supposed to eat certain meats, vegetations only. Kind you know everybody can't be eating the same thing. Okay. But I wish I could co-host with you, man, but I'm too busy getting... I'm in the studio right now, but I am listening. It's okay, brother. I just wanted to give you the honor because I never gave it to you before. Well, it's an honor big time. I'll take it the next time around. What's up, Lavender? Pragmatic? Drip? And I just want to say, Lavender, I'm real happy you're here because I know from my life on Spaces, Lavender, you have seen me from the bottom of the barrel come all the way to doing shows like this and having successful nights. And so I just want to say it's a pleasure to have you always. Thank you, Lavender. And thank you, L.A. Uh, send me the copy when you get it done. Uh, I can't yeah. wait to hear it. Yeah, you're, you're, here, to, you're here before anybody else, so you, you're good. And uh, so, uh, so, so let's explain, Drip, uh, let's explain to L.A., about the chlorine, he was asking about that. So no, I was asking about the hot water shower. Yeah, yeah, I that's what my... that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, so, okay. Since there's chlorine in the water, LA, when once you boil, like if you boil chlorine, it turns into like a phosphorus gas, and it's like po and it's poisonous. So if you take really scalding showers. All you're really doing is eating up that chlorine and making it a potent chemical against and, you. And it also increases the fluoride. I just uh, read that just a second ago. It increases the fluoride in the water as well. They do have these. Uh, they do have a filter system you can get. That goes to the so does it change? I'm sorry, Drip. I just had to ask this. Is it changing the chemical composition? Yeah, it's just like a, just like, like uh, in chemistry. Like whenever you boil, you know, you boil things to get a chemical, re you know, a chemical reaction. So it's technically right. the same thing going on whenever we're uh, taking these hot showers. Sounds like it's kind of describing it. The pregame, I saw you wanted to speak. I gave you a mic. So if you want to speak, uh, go ahead and come up. I gave you a, a oh, yeah. pragmatic. <laughs> pragmatic. <laughs> pragmatic, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm driving. I, I can't look at it like that. I, I sent him a mic if he wants if he wanted to come back up. Uh but but yeah, it's uh they, they do have uh what I found out they do have a filter system that you can put on to your pipe lines that 
will remove uh, the chlorine that actually really removes the chlorine and all these other chemicals from your, your water. But it's, uh, it's a little pricey, though. But they do have something to uh, combat against that. Yeah, that's good that they do. I mean, it's definitely worth something to uh, invest in. And uh, everybody, uh, before Pragmatic goes, please like and share the room, please, so we can get as many people in here as we can and spread the word about all this. And uh, go ahead, the, uh, the Pragmatic. Go ahead. Hey, how are you all doing? I tried to log in on my laptop, and, of course, uh, Twitter has that or X has that dialed in to cancel it all out. But here's what I went through today, and this is – this is not new. My neighbor, um, I live in West Virginia, and my neighbor is what's called a well tender. So all the gas wells and oil wells, he goes out and he cleans up all the brush around them and keeps them so that they can get to them and work on them if they need to. So, you know, I'm like, okay. So he has the property right next to my seven acres that I have a little refuge for wildlife and my garden and stuff. And I, I've talked to him several times and he's a typical 30 year old. I know everything, West Virginia, Trump fanatic, um, you know, the world's going to end tomorrow if Trump doesn't save us like Jesus Christ guy type guy. But I try, you know, I try to be nice. He's my neighbor and everything. Anyway, so today, and I've talked to him several times because what he likes to do is spray the creek that runs through his prop, the front of his property and then through the middle of my property, and he sprays the creek bank with Roundup in order to kill all the plants. He doesn't want any plants in his creek, okay? That's his whole thing, I guess. I don't know. But I've asked him many times, said, look, you know, if you cannot use – ground up i'd appreciate it because it just runs off into my property and he's like well uh, uh uh you know and i've seen him out there weed eating but we've had a drought for about three months so our creek is completely dry for miles um i've got one little pond left on the other side of my culvert and i've actually run my hose in the pond just to keep enough water in there for the frogs and the snakes and the fish and you know all the animals that he's poisoning come. all of that and he's not smart enough to know that i've tried to freaking tell him and he they don't care here the harder i try to save what's here the more they're freaking cutting shit down and chopping shit up and burning shit and letting they they throw their freaking trash in a big pile and then burn it and as soon as it rains it washes all down into the creek and flows down the creek through my property i've asked them nicely i've asked them all nicely i've said look you know i've tried to work with them i've i've done everything i've got their domestic animals coming on my property screwing my shit up it's like i need to put up a 40 fucking foot wall around my property and block off the freaking creek and put it through a reverse osmosis system just to have a property that's that's not full of freaking toxic shit now the harder i try to keep things alive the more they're freaking killing shit and i'm like i what you know the whole freaking state is like this here and a lot of states are just like this and it's like i just can't I, I just can't, what do I can't, I just can't, I'm sorry. I'm just, at this point, I'm, I'm just at a loss. Have you tried going to the local city office and explaining it to they, see if they can get them to stop? They, that's what, oh my God, that's what, okay. DOH is department of highways. And because the creek run next to the highway, they come in and cut all this grass down. They support this. They literally, the government, the because everybody, all the rich people here are rich because they have a coal, a gas, or an oil well. A coal mine, a gas, or an oil well. 
That's why they're rich here. Everybody else is dirt freaking poor, working for minimum wage, and they think Biscuit World is gourmet food. This is what I'm dealing with. And they're all Trump. 90% of the people are Trump supporters, and the 20% that aren't are afraid to say so. And I say that because 10% have no clue what they're doing at all, but that's another story for another time. But I'm just like, I'm doing my best to save animals, and he's out here killing shit, spraying gallons and gallons of freaking Roundup in the creek that leads to mine. Not only that, but his leech line comes from his house, from his toilet, comes from his house and runs into a little tributary that runs into the creek. And I'm like, I'm at a loss. I'm just completely at a freaking loss. I can't talk to these people. They're idiots. They, it's my fault that the neighbor's animals come onto my property. How does that make sense? I, don't. I just don't. It don't. And I don't get any of it. And And the, and the problem is, is they just get, every time Trump wins, they get more emboldened and do more stupid sh stuff. And I'm just at a loss at this point. I'm just well, at a freaking loss. it's long. not about Trump. Whoever, this guy you're dealing with is just a moron. It ain't, I mean. It's the whole state. It's the, the, no, I can go <laughs> into the grocery store after Trump and you get these pompous people running around like they own the world now because Trump isn't convicted of whatever. Trump got off of this uh, legal charge. And, and you can tell. I mean, it's like it, this, this is Trump heaven right here. Trump could come here into Charleston and have the whole freaking state almost at his convention or a rally. That's why he doesn't come so, here. I, I, will, I will say, so... I'll take a stab at it that uh, you're a Democrat and uh, your state's fully Republican. Dude, what does my icon say? I can't read it. Oh, it says no. the pragmatic party. Pragmatic party. Yep, I got I'm you. not Democrat by any stretch. I would never. I got gotcha. you. So okay. It's a pragmatic. What is the pra What is that? I see. It looks like a buffalo. Uh... Yes, it's a, it's a bison. It's a bison. Um, what, okay. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, okay. Oh man, this so is so hard point. because the minute yeah, I so say explain something. explain this to us. Explain this to us. Okay. The, the first thing I want to explain is our plan for 2024 is to have everybody write in Prague and get the court of public opinion behind us. Now, anybody can run for any office. And if they're running as a write-in, they just add Prague to the list of write-in votes that count for them. So we, we have it covered across the board if people want to do it. And then anybody, and I mean anybody, when they go in to vote, they can write Prague in on every spot that allows for a write-in vote. So that's our one, just one of our pathways to victory and the court of public opinion. Now, in our, in our profile or our platform, and I'm going to bring it up here because I want to go directly to how it works. First is a UBI. And our UBI isn't like anybody else's. Our UBI is real simple. The 1% is going to pay for the bottom 10% that get a UBI. It's that, it's that simple. Okay. They can afford it. We need it. And that's the way it works. Now, everybody else gets a tax cut. Um down to, uh, you know, maybe $250,000. Everybody gets a tax cut. The rich pay more and make sure that we don't have any homeless people or hungry people. Can I ask um, you a question? Sure. So can we just fix it? You know, I, I like it so far, but I guess my question is, I was told that if we made the corporations actually pay their fair share, that... Uh, 
we wouldn't have to pay taxes at all. We wouldn't have to pay anything if the corporations actually paid. Oh, oh, that's um, it. It it's true, but we'd have to deal with our expenses, like the military and law enforcement, and, and we have some those seventy eight seventy eight cents of every dollar we pay in taxes goes to the military or the legal system. Okay, and the rest of it gets you know sent over to Ukraine or to Israel right now. So that's what's happening with all our money. So yeah, if if the if the one percent paid their fair share in taxes, um, nobody nobody under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars would have to pay a dime, and we could still have a UBI covering all the anybody who didn't make under or anybody. Our UBI covers anybody who doesn't make under twenty five thousand with some type of service, whatever service you might need. Under twelve thousand in income, that would be a full UBI program. Um, the 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 key to the UBI that we have, um, not only is it cost effective in three to five years because we consolidate the economic system and cut cut the budget for military and law enforcement, but we have a Recycle 100 program where we would have entrepreneurs who sign up for the UBI because they aren't making any money, can't find a job, but some of them are really smart. They would be able to start their own business in some area of recycling. Now, that could be an advertising agency to advertise a product that's made from recycled material to be recycled. So it can be in advertising or it could be in making it or collecting it, sorting it, processing it. Um, it would it would basically double the employment opportunities in America that quick. So those that's how the UBI and the and the Recycle 100 program work together. Then we have a more territorial land and restoration of wildland as possible and the ultimate goal would be to completely connect all the wild lands first in the united states and then globally and set up a buffer zone between countries of natural habitat and this would you know hopefully relieve a lot of the stru stresses and and uh tribal warfare that goes on and and it's a little bit more complicated, but basically it's real simple. You just give everybody a little bit more space by taking a little bit of space from everybody. And then we protect, because our wildlife is having major problems. So, then we so have- uh, I mean, yes. yeah. uh, So what, what would be like, what would be y'all's way to counter this, this issue that we have going on with our foods and, and, and our fertilizers that are, are are basically poisoning our grounds. What what would be okay? It it's called a natural farming system, and it's really simple. We go back to the way nature does it. Nature poops. The plant that likes that poop grows the best. So we just need to find the poop that helps the corn grow best. Does that make sense? And whatever it is, I mean, it doesn't matter what plant you're trying to grow. You just need to find the combination of manure that makes that plant grow the best, the healthiest possible plant you can have. And right now we have a problem with, with viable seeds because it's all hybrid or GMOs. And we need, to, we need to end all of that and go back to the natural way of farming. Now, there'll be a little bit of a transition, and we're going to have to help our farmers out, but I don't think anybody would have a problem with helping a farmer transition into a natural farming system where they don't use any chemicals whatsoever. None. They use basically poop, and, you know, if they have to till, then they till, and if they need a greenhouse to start plants, then we help them get a greenhouse growing, and there's the machines that'll plant plants. And if we make the machines electric and solar powered, see, the, all these things are really simple. They really are because nature's been doing it for how many millions of years. So all this stuff is really simple, actually. It really is. Um, we don't need cars. We don't need Teslas. 
We don't need a car that's going to do 180 miles an hour in seven seconds. We, we don't. What we need is a car that's going to do 80 miles an hour all day long and get powered by the sun. And if we need to plug it in at night, then, okay, we plug it in at night. And I'm, we I'm, use- I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to be uh, real with you. I, I like to drive fast, so I, I do like my, my fast cars. I'm just going to be honest with you. Oh, I'm, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, though. But well, I'm not saying we can't have them. I I want my '61 Chevy Stepside back with my 327 that was tricked out to the max. You know what I mean? I like doing 200 miles an hour, but that doesn't mean I need to drive it every damn day. You know what I mean? It's like a gun. I don't shoot a gun every day, even though I want one. You know. I'm just saying we don't when 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 Henry Ford started his automobile company with the Model A, it was a cheap, basic, um, factory made. Here it is. Everybody can afford one. Here you go, and everybody loved it. So then he made the Model T, which was a little bit better, and everybody could still afford it. And basically, we could afford cars up until about. Oh, what, 20, 30 years ago, and now it's just completely out of line. You can't even buy a used car. So, okay, so we have the UBI with the recycle to back it up. We're protecting the habitat and restoring what habitat we can in order to slow down the rate of extinction. We have solar to hydrogen, which basically is nothing more than putting solar panels on every roof and running that into hydrogen Um, electrolysis generators that produce hydrogen. We put that under pressure, 10K PSI, and save it for when we need electricity and we're not getting enough solar power to cover everything. So solar panels on every roof. We don't have to cover countrysides or cut down a tree, none of that. All we do is put them on the south sides of businesses and on the roof, real simple. And we've got, now there's better alternatives, but they've got those hidden and we need to, flush those better energy alternatives out, which we'll do, but that's another, uh, we just need something that people can grasp onto to get us going. And then when we put the hurt on the fossil fuel industry, then we can get prices down and we can use the fossil fuel industry to, to facilitate our advancement and stop killing nature basically is what it amounts to. Then we need massive judicial and campaign reform, take the money out, primaries are God. We need robust primaries, everybody gets a chance. Um, you know, so it's, it's really not that difficult, but we only have two choices right now, people think. But like I said, 100 million people vote pragmatic in November the court of public opinion, all we need to do is get five or six people in the in the Senate and maybe 10 people in the House. So and, I, uh, I'm sorry, Pratt, man, I don't mean to uh, nope. butt in, but I, I just had a, another question real quick. When you say vote pragmatic, and I, I, I noticed you said just write in prag. So, like, how, how does that work exactly? Like, um, you're not putting in a person's name, you're putting in just the party am am i understanding that correctly or well that's that beautiful that is the greatest question i've heard all day that's beautiful yes in a way when you write in prag you're voting for policies plans and the platform of the pragmatic party but anybody if if somebody went in turned in the signatures it doesn't cost a dime but you go into your secretary of state's office or your board of elections whatever it is in your state and you register as a write-in candidate, and then they give you a list of names that are legitimate votes for you. So it'd be like your first name, your first and last name, just your last name, and Prag. And you have usually you have about 10 different votes that count for you. So you could be voting for an actual person, or you're voting for the policies, plans, and platform. But that's just one one way to do it. Voting pragmatic basically means not voting for the mainstream candidates. No Republicans, no Democrats, and at this point, no independents for all practical purposes. Um, now, libertarians in green, I don't, 
I don't have any faith in the in the federal Green Party. They blocked me, by the way. I don't have too much faith in the Libertarian National Party, but there's some splinter groups of both that are running candidates that don't follow the national uh, platform. So yeah, I'd rather have you vote for a Libertarian or a Green than a Republican or Democrat. So, and right now I we've gotcha. got... So that's where we're at there. Right now we've got Stein, Oliver, West, RFK, Kamala, and Trump. Okay, that's six people. So now if we get 100,000 people to vote pragmatic, or I mean 100 million people to vote pragmatic, and then the rest are split up six different ways, we would sweep November. I mean, just sweep it. And they couldn't ignore us at that point. And like I said, our policies, plans, and platform is completely um, transparent. Here it is, no mysteries. I can explain all of it. Um, the judicial, our prisons, our judicial system is a mess. We all know that. Uh, campaign reform, take the money out of politics. Everybody gets a chance, equal time, like it used to be in the 70s. Um, and then, of course, the healthcare industry is it's death care. It's basically sickness maintenance. We don't have a healthcare industry. I don't know why anybody would want free medical care from the system that we have today. That just makes no sense to me. We need to reform the medical system and just make sure everybody has access to it and education which our policy is cost based on income. So if you're making under 12,000, you're collecting our UBI, you can go to school free and you get your medical free. If you're making 50,000, then you would pay like 2% or two, you would pay no more than 2% of your annual income, no matter what. I don't care if you're medical bill was five billion dollars because you got cancer and now you don't have any income at all so now you're on the ubi you're getting it free you see what i mean and everything we do is also individual in other words it's by the individual it's not this who lives in the household crap or how many are in your family or what did your daddy make or what it no this is you as an individual so that's where we're at so far that's good. That sounds good. I mean, it sounds like you guys have a plan. Uh, can I ask how, how big is uh, your group of people? How, how many people are in this thing together? Because we tried, uh, we were starting something up of our own. And so I'm just curious, what size are we talking is this party? How many people are involved? Okay. First of all, we're decentralized. We don't have any, <clears throat> the only centralization is this account on X is the only authorized uh, content for the pragmatic party. Now, I'm not saying other people don't know it. I'm not saying you can't get information up from other people, but there's about 182 um, fake pragmatic parties out there right now. So, so y'all are spread. So, so y'all are like in, in multi states. Then, like, there's people. Well, I started off in California in 1979. I've been to 46 of the 48 contiguous states. I haven't been to Hawaii. I haven't been to Alaska, and I've been doing it since then. So, there's basically what it amounts to is this: if we get enough public fervor and get the word out to enough people, it will happen. Okay, but, you know, right now it's like, you know, we have the Mountain Party in West Virginia, and they claim to be affiliated with the Green Party, which the Green Party said they can't affiliate with another party because then they'd lose their federal funding. But somehow the Mountain Party can't affiliate with the Green Party, but the Pragmatic Party can't. 
Well, why is that? Because the Green Party's bought and paid for. And basically what they do is they take votes away from the from the uh, Democrats. And the Republicans love that. So they fund the Green Party. And then the same thing goes with the Libertarians are funded by the Democratic Party because they take votes away from the, re the Republicans. Does that, you understand where I, how that works? Yeah, I okay. think uh, like who Clark was talking about, like it would be really, uh, uh, it would be pretty interesting for uh, Prez to really speak with uh, with you because I mean, you guys kind of are, are uh, seems like to be aligned uh, with a lot of the same uh, goals. Uh, have you talked to Perez Clark lately? Who, who? Uh, no, I think he. Uh, <clears throat> I think he decided to uh, separate himself from this. I don't know what he's doing. So, yeah. Uh, what What is he? What, uh, what is next door? Have you ever heard of Press Next Door? No, I have not. Sure. Okay. Yeah, he'd be an interesting guy. Uh, no problem, May. I thank you for joining, brother. I appreciate it. Come back anytime, man. Well, I'm I I was hoping to to because I know L. A. Ramon, he's trying to make a go of it, and obviously you are. Um, I you know I'm trying to brainstorm because my weak point in all this. I mean, I'm really bad at asking for money. That's just something I've never done. And I, you know, I've never asked anybody for any money for this. And I've had people give me money and I'm like, well, okay, but you got to help me. You got to tell me how you want me to spend it because it's your money. You know, you're just earmarking it for what will help the pragmatic party. That's it. You know, and people are like, wow, that's weird. And, and they can't really get used to that. But I'm looking for help. I need help. I need, you know, ways to get the word out or, um, you know, I have a print uh, copy post um, uh, image that you can, you know, print out and go post it on bulletin boards or drop it off at houses or put it on windshields at the parking lot. I mean, I've got a lot of great ideas and people have a lot of great ideas, but we need to figure out how to make this work how to get the word out. I get single digit yeah. impressions. I need help. That's, that's been the problem for everybody trying to do something. Everyone who's been trying to take action against this whole circus of Republicans and Democrats, the problem everyone has, and I've seen it over and over and over again, nobody can get the reach because all the people that have the reach on X None of them want to risk the money they're making from it I mean, to, good, the, to stand up for this shit. Go ahead, Drip. The big accounts are paid by, the, by these people, so of course they're not going to uh, you know, try to help people like Pragmatic or Prez because they're getting paid by the same people. Like, so once they you know, start trying to step outside of the box and help people like uh, the Pragmatic Party or Prez, or another guy that I know, Todd Fine, uh, they lose their their funding. So, you know, that's uh, well, that's not only that, but they lose they lose the people that come into their spaces. They lose their views. Now, instead of getting five thousand views on everything that they tweet or post, now they get five, like I do, you know, and they just completely shut them down. I've seen it happen every time. Every no matter what, you're absolutely correct. That's exactly what happens. And they'll even show, they'll even put a little shot across the bow if you even attempt to let somebody like me or the gentleman you were talking about, um, you know, get any reach at all, boom. I mean, if, if I have a list of people that get under 100 views per post. And if I tweet something and then send it to 20 people that are on that list, um, they make, they, they lock my account, force me out of my account, force me to prove I'm human, and then force me to log in with the, the X app, not on my browser, because my browser is the only thing 
that keeps me safe, well, semi-safe from X. And I use Firefox browser to do that. They're sort of like a little shield that that buffers me against X censorship. But I'm, I need help. I need help and I need all these people you're talking about to say, okay, look, if they have a problem with any of the policies, we can work it out. You know, I'm I'm not willing to compromise integrity, but you know, I can explain everything that I just explained to you guys. It's it's not rocket science really at all. You know, and after what yeah. I just go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, like, these are the type of people that wouldn't ask you to compromise anything. The the problem is is getting everybody on board and getting a hold of everybody because there's been some separation. But uh, uh, like Prez, Prez is such a smart guy. This guy can actually build a fusion reactor, you know? So like, this is the level of intelligence we're talking about with some of these people. So they're in no way, shape or form dumb people. They're very smart, and uh, they all ran into this same issue, which is getting the word out. Because it, without streaming everywhere, it's very difficult to get the word out. So even e even if you do stream everywhere, all they do is just uh, reduce the amount of bandwidth, so that you can only have ten people listening at a time, and we need a hundred million to hear it. By yep. November. And, and that is the issue is we never get enough people at one time. So that's exactly, yep, that's exactly it. So how that's what we need to figure out. How can the only, the only solution that I have seen to that is if each and every one of us, okay, if you take one and then double it, that's two and then double it, that's four and then double it, that's eight. And you do that 30 times, you get a lot, way over 100 million, okay? So if, if each one of us did that, and then we had the people that we said, look, all we're doing is trying to get the word out to, to write in Prag, which is basically write in when you, Prag when you can and don't vote for a Republican or Democrat. That's simple, okay? We got to keep it simple. Got to keep it real simple. So that's the whole pragmatic party angle. Vote prag, write in prag where you can, and don't vote for a Republican or Democrat. That I mean, it's kind of like we need to to frame that in solid yeah. gold with diamonds. Yeah, I got you. But uh, I, I want to get back to the topic, though, because... Uh, it's just the thing is, is we can go on and on for days about something like this because it takes a lot of planning and a lot of people and a lot of effort to get it going. And that's not what we're doing tonight. Um, so uh, thank you for sharing all that. It's very interesting. And come back, come back again, and we can talk more about it. Um, but there's really nothing I can do for you at this moment. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like I, I have no resources to really help you out at the moment. Do you have, do that. you have two, do you have two people that trust you enough to, um, you know, if you told them, I want to support the pragmatic party, it's real simple. We just don't vote for a Republican or Democrat. And um, if we can write in prag, in November, we do that, and that will um, help us get known, and maybe we can change things. Do you have two people that you think you could convince of that? Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Besides Drip, and maybe, I, I don't even know. I, to be honest, probably not. Like, most of the people I know, if they like Trump, they think he's the answer. They're voting for him 100%. So it's like it, people are either Democrat or Republican and they don't want to stray away from it. It's uh, they're caught in the loop and they don't understand the way out is to not vote either or they don't understand that. 
So do you, if do I you, have two people, I don't think I do have two people. <laughs> do you think that um, that maybe that is a misconception and just the people that you're allowed to see on Twitter? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh... I don't have a whole bunch of friends, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm kind of just with a, a group of people, and uh, but that group doesn't have much to do with the politics of everything. So, you know, like I said, there's only a few people I know that are into this type of conversation, and uh, right now they're not in the room besides Drip. Uh, they're not in the room, so... Uh, yeah, but... I the 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 thing is is th those are the people that we just kind of need to figure out a way to do it. Uh, how can I explain it? Um, oh, I understand. I know what you're talking about. I, we had the same problem. It's how do you really start something like that up and spread the word? And it, without somebody who has reach, you really can't. Because without reach, you're not going to be able to reach anybody. But then as soon as you get somebody with reach that says, okay, I'll support that, they take their reach away. Yeah, that, that could happen too. Yeah, that could happen. Because it's, it's not what the majority of people want to talk about. It's not what they want us to talk about. <laughs> exactly. They want us to talk about Trump and Biden or Trump and Kamala, yep. not not Green Party or Libertarian yep. Party or, or the Pragmatic Party. We're, exactly. we're not. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. The, the only thing. Oh, now I lost my train of thought. I hate it when I do that. Um, I, uh, I Hold on, let me think a second. I remember now, I remember. Okay, my only solution to that was to find somebody like Musk or somebody who's rich, find somebody who's really famous and trusted like Dolly Parton or somebody. Yeah, that's who you'd share. have to find. You'd have to find literally someone who's so big they can't knock them down exactly because they would just knock us right down you know exactly you that's exactly it perfect like they would just smash us, us away. like a bug yeah because they don't want like nothing bug. like this to happen they don't want nothing like this to happen but it's what needs to happen for change and, exactly and you would think elon would be smart enough to know that you would that's think what you would think but uh, he, didn't, he didn't get all that money by being team. Yep. People. Yep. Well, and that's you know who Will, you know who William Randolph Hearst is. He was a I've newspaper. Heard the name, yeah. Yeah. He he was a newspaper baron way back in the early 1900s, and um, he wanted to take over the world, and he was going to do it with his newspaper. This is before radio and television, and uh, you know. He came damn close to it. He almost took over Cuba. And he was from New York, and he had the Hearst Empire uh, Media, which was the newspaper at the time. It's grown since then, and it's still part of the problem. But, but yeah, he, he, that's why Musk did this. He wants to take over. He wants total control. He doesn't want the pragmatic party because the pragmatic party wouldn't give somebody who's just rich control does that make sense i mean he doesn't have oh, yeah, any it policies. makes a lot of sense yeah it makes a lot any, of sense yeah he doesn't have any policies or plans or he could care less as long as he makes billions of dollars and has total control that's all he wants he doesn't care if people are homeless or hungry or starving or dying or he doesn't that's the last thing on his mind, I'm sure. Most definitely. But so uh, we need to we we just need to find somebody who's rich, famous, or powerful enough to withstand the pressure of doing it. And we can do it.
Yeah, that is what you'd have to do. But uh, we are going to be wrapping this up. Uh, it's a shame everyone left because uh, it's time for questions and last statements. So, and I like the story you told about your neighbor. Uh, I don't. It's not that I like it. Um, what he's doing is terrible. But it was. It went very well with the show uh, about poisoned food and poisoned earth. So thank you for sharing that, Pragmatic, and uh, keep joining us, and maybe you'll meet some people who can maybe help out. Uh, we're here well, Monday through Friday. A real a, a good hacker would be a, a godsend. I know so. If, if I, wish, I wish we could do something like what V for Vendetta did. That's what I would like to see happen. So a professional, you know, little video clip meme type uh you know it would only have to be like 30 or 30 seconds long or so and just hack the media and on every screen available have the same thing pop up bam a 30 second you know look this is what we have to do we all know it this is you know v for vendetta and we're coming we're coming to take it we're taking it. We're taking our our planet back from the rich, or something of that nature. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, definitely, I do. But uh, so let's uh, finish this up, though, because uh, 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 most of the people left, and uh, show's pretty much over. We've been running over an hour now, so um, we keep, like to keep it at around an hour. Unless we have a lot of people, then we go for around two hours. But uh, it's small right now, so we're going to shut it down. And Misha didn't get to join us today, so hopefully there's no issues there um, because we need him in here. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what's, uh, what's going on with Misha? I don't know. I, I just messaged him and asked him if he was busy today because, uh, yeah, we need that in here. Otherwise, the shows don't perform as well, so, you know. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully he was just busy. But uh, thank you, Pragmatic. Thank you, Joanna, for sticking it out with us. And uh, maybe you can meet some people, Pragmatic, that can help. If Prez ever shows up again, we'd love to introduce you to. Uh, definitely. And uh, so we'll see about that uh, if he ever shows up again. So we'll see. And uh, any final statements, Drip? Or pragmatic. No, I'm pretty uh pretty good for the night. Uh, it's, you know, like you said, we usually have a few more people in here, uh, but we kind of been down for a few days. So uh, just keep coming back and joining us, pragmatic, and you uh, will probably get a chance to meet some people that you uh, might be interested in connecting with. Well, I I appreciate the uh, opportunity. I I appreciate that more than you know. And, you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm only more determined now than I was 57 years ago when I said, oh, no, the Democrats and Republicans don't seem like they're doing the right thing at five years old. So it doesn't take a genius to figure all this out. We just need to unscrew everybody's mind from the narrative and and fill them in on what's real and I appreciate the time and everything and yeah just let me know anything I can do to help thank you brother we appreciate you and thanks for coming in today uh it was a good show that we had a good topic and uh this was a good show so uh with that we're gonna wrap this up and uh this has been another episode the X Society Truth Tellers Nightclub Poison Earth, and stay classy, America. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Let me uh, show my screen here. One second. Hey guys, Misha here. Uh, so 
that was X Society Truth Towers, um, hosted by at Clark West Cooper and uh, Drip uh, at L Drip. Um, one second, let me uh, let's move this back a little bit because I want to show you a little bit more about the people there on the space. So, I just want to give a few shout outs to the the crew that makes this show possible. Uh, first off, we have at Clark West Cooper. Clark um, is the host, uh, kind of the um, brainchild. Brainchild's not a term. Uh, visionary, um, creator. Uh, he, he came up with the concept of X Society Truth Towers. I think to be a space where people could talk about controversial controversial topics in a way in which it's like not controversial for the sake of being controversial, but like things that we should be discussing that people aren't and that oftentimes do not get as much media attention. So we realized we kind of pose a risk to ourselves as X Society by producing this content. Um, I think that's part of our brand, though, to have these conversations and, you know, like... Uh, um, you know, uh, I, oh, I, we've had everything from Hadron Colliders to uh, stuff in our food supply to international conspiracies with war, like you name it. And I think that um, what I think is cool about this crew is people aren't coming here to like convert. I feel like they're coming here to discuss, learn, ask questions. And that's what's cool. And that's what I think uh, Truth Towers does really well here. So I want to give a shout out to at Clark West Cooper here. Then I also want to give a shout out at AI Council. Um, at AI Council is uh, a great, great person. Um, he has he goes on a lot of a lot of uh, spaces and whatnot. You'll see him on everything from Alex Finns to X Society to to Penny Intelligent, whatever it is. Like like Cyrus is one of those guys where I think Cyrus is all around, but Cyrus doesn't really take sides and whatnot. You know, I think he's just like a a really good speaker. Always love having Cyrus on stream. Or on his face. I want to give a shout out to L.A. Ramon. L.A. Ramon, uh, music producer, uh, friend of Clark, very smart guy. He joined the space tonight. Please give him a follow and check it out. I want to check out the Pragmatic Party. They're talking about kind of a third party, a third party option, uh, and how if we want the system to change, we have to kind of reject the left and the right or the current candidates and go with an alternative option. So they, they had some really interesting ideas. I gave them a follow. I invited them back to other spaces that we would have, I hope that they they attend. It would be great to have them. Other people here. One second. I want to shout out Drip. Drip is a host of X Society Truth Towers with Clark. So Drip at or at Ill, at Ill Vibes at Ill Vibes. So at one L L Vibes one one one. It's up here on the screen, guys. Let me just zoom in so you can really see it. Zoom in, see, really see, see Drip. There you go. So Drip, with the laser eyes here. Um, guys, so yeah, this is Drip's handle. Drip is the host of Gord... Well, uh, when we have Good Morning X-Space. Uh, host of Good Morning X-Space. But he is the host of X Society, Truth Towers, and Clark. Um, so like, I kind of think about my role in this show. It's like, uh, you know, we're kind of talking at the end. Like, I want to make sure the show is successful because I think that these guys have great conversations. So oftentimes, when I'm in these spaces, I don't do a lot of the talking because... I'm learning a lot of times. Like some of these topics are new to me. So sometimes I'm putting stuff up on the Jumbo trying and whatnot. Like we're all kind of put, coming together to make this show possible. But I very much consider like Drip and Clark to be the showrunners, like <coughs> the visionaries of it, uh, kind of um, what they want to talk about. And, and I think that between them, myself, anyone else from X Society or anyone else from X that stumbles in, we're able to put together some really great conversations. So that's Strip. And other people, let's just do a quick uh, run through. Yeah. Like anyone I missed. Um, I think a few other people joined earlier. Just want to see if I should shout them out. So I think there were a few other names there. Uh, if they were, we'll shout them out. But thank you guys all for attending. Um, you know, we have Clark, AI Council, L.A. Ramon. The Pragmatic Party, <coughs> and Drip. And once again, um, I'm still with X Society Truth Towers. The thing is, just, I'm a little bit under the weather right now. Uh, I'll be all right. But this is your recording, guys. This is the episode August 15th, 2024, X Society Truth Towers. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, go to all the profiles I mentioned here on X. Also, go to our YouTube, at Misha Fitton. We post the, and on Rumble, we post the, um, we post the recordings and everything. Also, I'm not trying to get these guys at Clark, West Cooper, Drip, and all of them. 
on a YouTube or something. Like, I, I don't know. We're just tr- we're trying to get the content out there. That's the thing. So, like, as soon as Quark has a YouTube or a Rumble or something, I'm also going to make sure, like, that's advertised here. So, you know, check out Quark. And Quark, in particular, this is, this is like, a show that he's kind of made from the beginning. So, you know, a lot of times, like, this is on my stream. But, again, I want to make sure we're giving credit where credit is due. Like, like this is a... Uh, an idea that came from Clark, and I'm, I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. I, I love producing where I can and, and promoting the show. Um, but I think what where it makes X Society special and X Society Truth Teller special is like Clark's off and talking about stuff I don't even know. Like I know some of the stuff if it's a more general topic, but like a lot of the stuff tonight was kind of new to me, and I think a lot of stuff that have been, has been talked about in previous episodes is new to other people as well. But I don't feel stupid coming on to these conversations. And I don't think that Quark or anyone else sets up an atmosphere for people to feel stupid. And I think that's a great thing. And I think that's something we should try to do more of on Spaces. So, guys, great show. We'll be back again every every night, uh, especially weekdays. Um, it is 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. We do a space, which means you can join the conversation. If you join the conversation, use this quick request the microphone. So if you join the conversation, it's usually on the bottom left here be like around like right here if it was a live space press that you can come up on the stage speak with us please please come speak with us also if you're a little bit more shy though come into the audience we won't force you to come up on stage or you can join anonymously as a listener on the space so you click this on at least on, on the iphone and on the website you click an anonymous option to join so you don't want us to see that you're there that's okay too uh we'll either think that it's uh the government uh Spy on us, or it's uh, one of our shy fans. Um, but seriously, uh, check those are our options. If you ask the other options, are we mo- we usually live stream the 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 podcast, the show, whatever we want to call it, um, on the at Misha Fitton uh, like uh, a profile on on X. So if you just want to go to my profile and hit it, you'll see a live stream of the space. So if you're watching the the turtle. <coughs> <coughs> This is me, the turtles, or like, let's say it's a Good Morning X all day stream because we've been doing a lot more of those lately. This is on my profile. It's streaming pretty much all day. Well, you might not want to just leave at eight o'clock. You might just want to stay on it and watch. So that's an option. So if you just want to keep watching, whatever's the best way for you to keep consuming the content, do it. We try and make it easy for you to do it in whatever way you want to. But please, though, where you're watching on my profile or you're watching on the YouTube or Rumble, wherever it is, please go to the other social sites and please go to X and follow these people. We want to try and get them more attention. Also, if you like what we're doing here, we're working against the algorithm in many circumstances when we talk about some of this stuff. So like, share, we definitely appreciate it. And also, again, tell your friends about it. Like we're not going to get a lot of friend, uh, a lot of help from big tech here. So like, you know, if you like what we're doing, please, please help us where you can. Thank you, everyone. This is the end of the X Society Truth Towers part of tonight's show. I'm going to end this part on at least, um, ooh, yeah, doing a little bit of a chest pain there. Jesus Christ. Uh, end this on um, 